We have a package kind of loaded up. Things are imported, exported. Again, we are in our RStudio session with Tester. Uh, I'm going to talk about continuous integration. So if you go continuous integration, you'll see the first Wikipedia page. So the idea is the practice of merging all developer working copies into a shared mainline several times a day. What we'll be talking about here is let's say you have a package that you're developing and you want to make sure that changes you make to this package are going to still work even though you made a small change. So one of the ways we can do that is by continuous integration. So what this will do is use um, cloud-based services to clone your package and then what it will do is it will install that package and run the checks that you have. So again, let's make sure everything's committed and up there we have a lot of things that we've changed. So updated the vignettes and added documentation for printer. Okay, I'm going to commit that. Now that I have my GitHub linked up, I can push to that repo. So we are going to be talking about two services today. One of the first ones is, again, we're going to be using to use this package. It's called Travis. So what is going to happen is Travis CI is a continuous integration service that allows you to run a check script on a R package to make sure that on a Linux box or a Mac uh, OS X box that it actually will run, install, and do everything that you need it to from kind of the ground up. So there used to be TravisCI.org, TravisCI.com, so everything's moving over to TravisCI.com. So if you have your packages that are new, I would go to TravisCI.com and then the profile and then your GitHub username. So you might have to log in. I log in through GitHub. So um, if that's the case, you should be able to set up an account relatively easily. Uh, also, GitHub has education packs for students, which is really nice, or uh, academics. So here I'm going to go to my tester package. Uh, pretty much we don't have to set anything up, but I just want to show you this is what it looks like. We can go to some of the settings and... What it's going to do is every time something's pushed up there, then it will run this test. So we have auto, we have a bunch of options here. We have environment variables. So if you need API keys or something like that set up, this might be a good way to do that. But you have to kind of do it in an uh, encrypted way. So you make sure that if other people see this repository, they don't see your keys. So what actually happened? So it wrote this dot travel, Travis dot, YML. So again, this is a YAML file and we can find it in our little search bar. So it's going to add this to the build ignore because this is not part of your standard R package process. This is part of something a little bit different that really interfaces with GitHub really well. So if it's in the build ignore, it's not going to be built and packaged in the package because we don't need this to install on somebody else's computer. So it gives you this code to copy to the clipboard. So what we're going to do is put that in the readme and I'll show you what we're going to get out of it. So let's put it at the top. And again, by default, use this, use this travisei.org. I'm going to change all this to com because that is the page I'm running off of, travisei.com. All right. So I'm going to knit this. So what did this give us? It gave us this weird YAML file, which I'll talk about in a minute, and it gave us this code to copy. What this will give you is a badge. The badge will tell you if it's passing, if it's erroring, or if it's unknown in this case because we don't have any builds of this job. So we're going to make no changes. I'm going to say everything's good. I updated the readme. I'm going to say added Travis file. So the mere act of committing and then pushing up to GitHub will do what's called triggering a build. So on TravisCI.com, if I refresh now, and I look at the build history, there should be a build here. So if we click this here, nothing's really gonna be happening just yet, but there's gonna be a log here. It's gonna tell you what is the configuration that you used. So it's a Linux box, the trusty distribution, you don't need pseudo privileges, you're gonna do some caching, and the language is R. So if you push things up to GitHub without this, dot Travis YAML file, it's going to run into some errors because it doesn't know that it's an R 
package. So you can click here to go to the specific commit and the diffs and all this fun stuff. It's got, and if you click the little Octocat here, it'll go to your GitHub repo. So this is going to run for a bit, and we're going to let that run, and I'll show you the output a little bit later. So what this will do is allow us to have some functionality of testing our package. So we can have additional options here. One of them, for example, we might want Linux and OS X. We also may want So let's make it simple. Let's do 3.4, 3.5, and develop. 3.5 is the current release. We could have also said released or old rel. So old release, release, and devel, or it can be explicit as to the versions. So also warnings are errors. True. So this is going to tell me that my package has broken if there are any warnings because again CRAN is a bit restrictive in some respects it doesn't really like warnings under uh, other than under very specific circumstances so I want to treat them exactly the same so if I see a warning I can just assume that it's pretty much broken and I still need to fix something so again if I clean and rebuild this we're not doing anything to the R code it doesn't really matter this is something outside the build process but it's nice and important because when I push this up I want to show you how things have changed on Travis. So adding different R versions to Travis build and additional operating system. So Travis will allow you to check on Linux and Mac OS X. We are going to be talking about another uh, distribution, another Continuous integration, continuous integration service that allows us to use Windows. So you'll see here it's installing all these packages. Everything's going great. Do 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 do. The log is pretty long. If you click this little button down here, it'll follow the long the log uh, along as it's going. If you go to the top, you can also hit the raw log, which is non-interactive. But this is the overall, you know, flat text file of everything kind of going on. All right. So again, this is building. But now let's look. And when we pushed, we got another build. All right. This one's going to look a little bit different, though. Because this is going to show us, oh, okay, here are the little penguins for Linux. Here are the little apples for OS X. And what we're doing here is we're building R3.4. We're building our package, checking our package on R3.4 on Linux, R3.5 on Linux, R3.6 on Linux, similarly with Mac. So what this will allow you, there are ways to control the behavior of this, say it's okay if it fails on Mac, I didn't really want to support that anyway, but you really should be able to support all three operating systems, Linux, Mac, and Windows at least. And so now let's move on to the Windows side. So this is a different service, it's called AppVair. So if we say use AppVair, what's going to happen? It's going to do something very similar to what happened with Travis. It's going to generate this app bear YAML file. It says you need to turn on app bear for, uh, for this repo at this link here. It opens that link and then it gives you another badge. So here we can copy and paste this in there and save it. And if we go over to app bear, I am now in here and I can search for tester. So I can click add. It will add a new project, but it hasn't. it's not going to build anything just yet. I could have clicked new build, but I want to do it automatically. So I'm going to say add it app there. Now, note, I changed the readme, but I did not re -knit it. So what this will give me is an error. It says readme.rmb is out of date. Please re -knit. So you can also, if you or a git person, git commit no verify to override it, but here all it's saying is saying, hey, your readme and your readme.md are not in sync. You need to sync them up and you need to recommit it. Otherwise, uh, they're going to be out of sync and I don't know really what to do. I don't. Uh, you added something to check that. So use this. When you say use git, it will actually add that in there. We're going to commit, we're going to close, and we're going to push. So again, committing locally, pushing to the cloud, we see this little badge here, again, it's unknown, but now that we've pushed, again, we see that app there is going to run, and it's going to run on a Windows machine and do our command check. So now we have 
two online services that are free, travisci.org or com and app bear that will run our command check and make sure that things work out correctly with that on a brand new machine. So you can see what co code is actually getting run for each of these and what these things called artifacts. So if there's failures, it will copy out the log and all these things so you can make sure you know what's going wrong. So if something works locally but not on one of these services, a lot of times that's due to you have hard links or hard paths in there or you forgot to import something correctly, but they're good ways to diagnose your problems. And especially if you're doing a lot of our package development, it gives you a good snapshot of if something's working and then those badges really give someone else an idea that like, yes, this thing is kind of stable, this thing is working and you can feel comfortable downloading it also, I'm not going to talk about it in this lecture, but if you Google R Hub on GitHub, so R Hub is a really nice uh, API client that will allow you to do very effective package development. It's built specifically for R, and it allows you to run checks for um, all these different types of platforms and it really does some really nice integration with R and does some good checks to make sure things work well on CRAN. That being said, I think the other services uh, are a little bit more mature. They're, they're much broader, but I think these services are, are very well integrated. R Hub is a great resource, but I don't use it necessarily for my continuous integration, but it really has some uh, nice potential, I think, for the future. Uh, okay, so now our package is set up, checked, tested and now it's tested on other systems other than our own so you don't have to go bug your friend you don't have to say hey can you try to install my package make sure everything works out you can do that uh, on an online service for free with great integration to github so now we have a package set up that should be able to be distributed as long as these checks pa uh, pass and if we make any breaking things as long as we have tests and examples to test that then we might be able to diagnose it the last thing i'm going to add is code coverage so uh, code coverage is pretty much a calculation of how much of your code is checked when you run your checks. So, and I mean those checks being usually unit tests, which we haven't covered just yet or in this lecture, or vignettes or examples. So when you have code, if it's not tested, we don't really know if it's supposed to do what it's uh, it's meant to do other than with tests are actually running the code code coverage will give you an idea of how much of that code is tested so there are two main um, online services one is called CodeCov you can see here or coveralls let's say we use CodeCov what this will do again is adding coverr which is a great package to, to calculate code coverage in our packages it adds this YAML file it again gives us another badge that will give us a little bit more information on the code coverage rather than just is everything passing or failing and then it adds this to the Travis file or it says add this to the Travis file so what this is going to do and again this is a YAML file so YAML is a white space language so you have to kind of be a little bit careful with your colons and stuff like that but our studio has a great way of editing these so like if you put some things wrong uh, it should be able to indicate if there are any problems, but the idea is that it will run R script and then this code cover function. So let's see what this does really quick. So it runs cover R in a package and then uploads the results to codecov.io. Okay, so we're going to go to codecov.io in a minute. Uh, we see the function is codecov. The coverage equals null, uh, base URL, all this kind of stuff, and then additional arguments. So package coverage is the actual function that's running this. By default, the types of checks it does is only on unit tests. And again, we don't have any. And I want to be able to use my examples as a little bit of a testing framework. So I'm going to say type equals all so that whenever it checks and calculates my code coverage, it takes into account my examples, my vignettes, and my unit tests all together to give me a percentage rather than just the unit tests because I might make examples that are very similar to unit tests. I probably should make a unit test for them, but I still want to use that in the calculation of the coverage. So again, we can clean and rebuild this. We can now commit. And now we can add all these things. So again, my RStudio session is about to restart. So sometimes you get that because you are trying to use this uh, panel when R is actually re uh, restarting. So I'm going to say added code coverage. And again, in the description file, it adds this cover R 
to the area. And again, before I do this commit, I'm going to be smart about it and say, hey, Alrighty. So commit, close, push, and then we're going to go to codecub.io and we are going to see what we have to do to enable this. So again, you would sign up with GitHub on this. I'm going to log in using my GitHub. And I don't have any repositories just yet, but it's syncing up with my GitHub. I'm going to say add new repository. So this may have not have synced up completely, but it's if you want to navigate directly, I can just say gh slash michellej2 slash tester as things are correctly on there. So I'm going to delete this repo so that uh, you should not put that token information out on the internet, but I'm going to delete all this after these packages are created, so it's not a big deal. Okay, that is all she wrote for continuous integration for now. Thanks.